Welcome, welcome, welcome to this channel, Baruch Abba Hashem Yahuwah. And today I'm going to do part four of the new in-depth series called Serve in Spirit. Part four starts with the discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit. Not everyone has uncontrollable thoughts, nor do all have overheated enthusiasm. For some, their problem lies in overpowering thinking. For others, in uncontrollable feeling. But the problem with the will is quite common to all. Sometimes the difficulties in both emotion and mind actually originate with the will. It is easy for us to say with our mouth, not my will, but thy will be done. We say that, but we say it with our mouth. Do we say it from our spiritual human baseness? Many who are not enlightened think it is easy to yield to the Most High Yahuwah. People who speak so casually are far distant from light. The root of the outward man is set in our will. Do not mistakenly think that consecration solves all problems. It is a start of surrender and surrendering yourselves to the Most High. The truth is otherwise. Consecration is merely doing our part in putting ourselves unreservedly into the hand of the Most High Yahuwah. It cannot be inferred that from this Most High Yahuwah immediately makes us whole. True, without consecration there will not be a starting point on the spiritual path. There will not be a starting point on the spiritual path. With consecration, we begin to walk in the right course. So that is why I said it is a starting point. It is the start to surrender yourself to the Most High Yahuwah. However, this does not mean that the Most High Yahuwah has already done all his works in us. Consecration does not solve all the problems. That is also, if you say this to the Most High, that you are willing to consecrate yourselves unto Him, you should not say this from this attitude that by doing such saying to Him that everything is solved in your life. No. That's a wrong attitude. You say it from your spiritual humanness, not from your flesh humanness. For a person to be serviceable to the Most High Yahuwah, there are two sides to be considered. Consecration and the discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh, or Holy Spirit. Consecration plus the Spirit's discipline make a person a serviceable vessel to the Most High Yahuwah. Consecration cannot be a substitute for the discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit. Consecration is offering myself to the Most High Yahuwah according to the light I have, whereas the discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit is Yahuwah the Most High exercising mastership within us according to the light of the Ruach HaKadosh. Consecration, since it is according to the light we have, is limited. 
our condition may yet be darkness in the sight of the Most High Yahuwah. Hence, our consecration cannot satisfy Yahuwah's requirement nor fulfill his heart's desire. Discipline, however, is according to the light of the Most High Yahuwah. He knows our need, so he arranges our circumstances to break us down. This work far surpasses anything we could do of ourselves. For all the works of the Ruach HaKadosh, or Holy Spirit, are done according to what the Most High Yahuwah sees as to where our needs are. Therefore, the discipline of the Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKadosh is thorough and complete. On the other hand, because we do not know what will happen, our choice is often wrong. There is no comparison in death between consecration and discipline. The discipline which the Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKadosh has arranged far surpasses our thought. As a result, the children of the Most High Yahuwah are frequently confused by such discipline. Many disciplinary acts seem to come suddenly. So you can say that many situations that we have been through in our lives were actually also done by the disciplining of, you know, uh, done uh, through the disciplining that the Ruach HaKadosh did in us because we all get born in some way, shape, or form with a piece of the Ruach HaKadosh in us. <clears throat> Better said, our, in our early years, we are so in line with the Ruach HaKadosh of the Most High Yahuwah, that through that, the Ruach HaKadosh could discipline us through our spirit. That's how I needed to say. Thank you so much, Ruach HaKadosh, for saying it correctly. Hallelujah, Baruch Yahuwah. Many disciplinary acts seem to come suddenly. Our so-called light is so faint that it often is nothing but darkness. Discipline is what the Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKadosh arranges for us according to the light of the Most High. What really is discipline? <clears throat> the Most High Yahuwah knows us well, although we often think we know ourselves. Actually, we do not. So from the time we accept the Most High Yahuwah, he begins to arrange our circumstances to discipline us. The work of the Ruach HaKadosh is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. The Most High dwells in us. What He, gi what he gives us is spirit, which is life. This is positive, for it builds up. When he enters us, we become a dual person. On the one hand, there is the Most High Yahuwah, and, on, and the, the Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, that the Most High Yahuwah brings into us. And on the other hand, there is our original person that is called the Outward Man. To build up the inward man is the work of the Ruach HaKadosh. Yet in so doing, he must also do the negative work of arranging our circumstances in order to break down the outward man. Being born again 
is the positive work of the Ruach HaKadosh. It is a building work. Discipline is his negative work. It is a breaking, a weakening work. He sees the strength of the outward man and so he deals with it because it poses a problem to the inward man. This can be compared to uh, wearing a narrow shoe. <laughs> and a narrow shoe uh, doesn't, you know, doesn't fit nicely. And if you, I, I've experienced how that is, so <laughs> that's why I know. Um, I've experienced what it is if you wear a too narrow shoe. It, it, it kills your feet. Your feet can be free in it. The outward man gives the inward man a great deal of trouble. And it's the same with this narrow shoe. Your feet is trying to, to do something so it can in certain way have a certain freedom and it does everything to avoid the tightness that is as a, a feeling of strangleness and then you get problems because then you uh, get what you're doing is you give pressure to certain muscles that are not able to deal with that pressure so you come into all sorts of trouble. So it's nice that he uses this example. In the outward man, we have an intense feeling, a wild thought and a strong will. We have a hard shell which imprisons our inward man. In the unbeliever, the outward man has subdued the inward man. But in those who have believed the Most High and are believing Mashiach Yahusha for a number of years, the Ruach HaKadash is breaking the outward man. The way the Most High Yahuwah chooses to break it is not by strengthening the inward man to do the work of breaking the outward man, rather the Most High Yahuwah chooses to deal with the latter with outside circumstances. So the way yeah, the Most High Yahuwah chooses to break is not by strengthening the inward man to do the work of breaking the outward man, the Most High Yahuwah chooses to deal with the latter with outside circumstances. So that is interesting. That's why I say it again, because here lays uh, the, the fact that we need to see and to learn that everything that happens in our life is a creation by the Most High Himself to break things down in you, to break your outer man. And especially if you have immersed and have been immersed in his name, then this process can be intensified. So then the Most High Yahuwah will bring certain persons on your path. He will create situations you have to go through all to break down the outer man. The inward man is strengthened through the Ruach HaKadash and the outward man is weakened by outside things due to the inadequacy of words we call this the discipline of the Ruach HaKadash or Holy Spirit. It does not refer to the inner control of the Ruach HaKadash, but points to his arranging outside circumstances to
to rule over us, thereby causing us to reach his goal. He is pleased to employ outside things to deal with the outward man. It is not easy for the inward man to strike down the outward man. A person of feeling is affected by feeling, for the outward man can be hurt by outer things more than by any other way. What needs to be broken differs in every person. Even that worthless sparrow will not fall to the ground without the permission of the Most High, Yahuwah himself. All our hairs have been numbered, none will fall out without Yahuwah's permission. So for those whom are losing hair, there is more to it than you think. All the circumstances of the saints are arranged by the Most High Yahuwah. Everything is ordered by Him. Whatever happens to a believer is pre-arranged. All our environments are Yahuwah's ordering. Even our hairs have been numbered. Hairs are the most insignificant and tiniest things in our body. Yahuwah, Most High, points to this to show us how everything is under His arrangement. He alone knows how to break our outward man. Never consider anything which happens to us as accidental. All things which happens to us are Yahuwah's way to build us up. He causes us to receive the discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh. All our happenings are measured, to, uh, measured out to us by the Most High Yahuwah Himself. Do not ever assume that poor environment, bad turn of events, great difficulties and woeful things come from the work of man as if someone wants to hurt you or that you or that your fate is doomed. Please remember whatever the Most High Yahuwah has done to us is to discipline us and is for our good. Where we would be today if he had not used these things to break down our outward man. This is Yahuwah's method to keep us pure in his way. Please do not murmur for in subjection and murmuring are altogether foolish. Wow. And that is what a lot of people are doing and I see so many people around me doing this. Murmuring. So listen to the Most High. He says that it's, it is foolish to do that. What you have to do is accept how He is working through you and how He is breaking down the outer man in you. And yes, it is sometimes difficult to accept this, but where does this difficulty of acceptance come from? It comes from the out, outward man. Why? Because he knows that his grip will be lost on you and that it has to be submissive to the Most High Yahuwah himself. This is the best discipline we can ever have. The discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh is the ordering of our circumstances according to what the Most High Yahuwah knows of us. The Ruach HaKadosh commences this work on the day we are saved. He is free to work beginning from the day we consecrate ourselves to the Most High Yahuwah. On those who are saved, 
but not consecrated, the Ruach HaKadosh also works. But if you speak out that you are willing to consecrate yourselves completely to the Most High Yahuwah, whether the outcome will be death or life, that you shall consecrate yourselves to the one and only Most High Yahuwah Himself, that will give space and room to the Ruach HaKadash in us to do its work of disciplining. Because by saying that you are consecrating yourself, you are actually giving your permission also to the Ruach HaKadash to start up this process in you. That is why you need to say it from your spiritual humanness and not from your carnal humanness. But he cannot freely work so. So that's what I mean that by saying that you give permission to the Ruach HaKadash to freely work through you to do its work of discipline in you. So he will wait till we have some light and our hearts are constrained to offer ourselves to the Most High Yahuwah. Life or death, joy or pain, we put all in the hands of the Most High Yahuwah. Such consecration gives the Ruach HaKadash freedom to work. Well, I said it. After we have offered ourselves unconditionally to the Most High Yahuwah, the Ruach HaKadash is able to work in us boldly without any reservation. All who walk in this way must pay attention to the work of the discipline of the Ruach HaKadash, or for many known as the Holy Spirit. After a person is saved, the Most High Yahuwah never fails to give him grace or favor. Each and every one has certain ways by which to receive grace. Or for many, uh, um, is it also known as favor? Such as prayer, listening to preaching, assembling together, and reading the book of scriptures. Day by day, we live such lives of receiving grace. Daily, we receive more grace or favor. <coughs> and also by doing <coughs> what the Most High Yahuwah is ordering us to do. That is also being disciplined. Um, Yet even when we put all these ways of receiving grace together, they do not measure up to the discipline of the Ruach HaKadash. Under the Most High Yahuwah's ordering, there is no single way of receiving favor that is more important than the discipline of the Ruach HaKadash. This is because through it, Yahuwah the Most High breaks the outward man, the growth of many people still relies on prayer, on prayer, listening to messages and the half an hour scripture reading in the morning. So every day half an hour. They miss the principal way of receiving grace. The things which we encounter daily in the hospital, in school, on the road and at home offer us the most opportunities. Failure to see this creates the greatest loss, for we miss out on the best way of receiving grace. Reading the book of scripture cannot substitute for the discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh. Assembling together cannot replace it. None of the other ways of receiving grace can be an alternative to it. 
No one can be a good believer without learning to accept and to experience discipline. None may serve the Most High Yahuwah without it. True listening to messages may nourish us, prayer may awaken us, and reading the book of scripture may feed us. These may indeed refresh our spirit, but discipline is to purify us. It is a getting rid of mixture. The greatest profit comes from the arrangements of the Ruach HaKadosh. If we are able to submit and not quarrel with the Most High Yahuwah, the Ruach HaKadosh will discipline us from all sides. Yahuwah's hand will never draw back until we are freed from things such as field, house, herd and flock, clothing and so forth. He will not overlook the smallest item. His purpose is completion. He will never withdraw his hand. For some, the Most High Yahuwah will arrange all kinds of people for them. When He uses people to deal with us, we begin to see our ugliness, which we most of the time do not want to see. Sometimes He will deal with our thought, be it confused, wild, clever, or overlie meticulous. He allows us to hit the wall and be defeated. After we have failed and received favor or grace, we will then be afraid of our own thought, as though fearing the fire. Some may be overlie sensitive. Some may be flippant in joy, some may be depressed to the point of laziness. The Most High Yahuwah will so deal with their emotions that they dare not to be undully joyful or sorrowful. And I come to understand that an oversensitive, oversensitiveness is actually an imbalance of a uh, actually uh, an imbalance in you uh, oversensitivity which I also have experienced in my life for quite some time f um, feeds things as anger pride jealousy wrath anxiety and so on but also it feeds an overactive it also stimulates, better said, the brain um, in worrying, sorrow, being in sorrow, uh, creating all sorts of worries, overthinking, um, and making your brain going over hours. So, oversensitivity is actually not good because it wearies you out it wearies your brain out your brain is overstimulated in thinking in making worries in uh, in in the thinking of what if and it opens doors for the unseen to come in and to tease you and to play with you. And uh, when I went through that, actually, eventually, um, I lost this oversensitivity and it started slowly but surely come into balance. The Most High Yahuwah will so deal with their emotions that they dare not be undully joyful or sorrowful. 
Some have a strong will and are self-confident. The apostle or disciple Shaul or Paul received such grace that he dared not trust his flesh nor believe in himself. Our self must be brought to its end either by ourselves or by other people. Then we dare not have confidence in ourselves. After being dealt with again and again and again, after being defeated more and more, we are brought to the place where we will lower our head and dare not think or act out from ourselves. And I see so many people on the path being busy with all sorts of questions and things that are so irrelevant and so not of now. Questions such as, yeah, how would life be if we are in the new Jerusalem? Questions as, uh, what stage are we in? of the revelation you know according to the story in the book of revelation um, they are pondering upon all sorts of things having debates over all sorts of things but what they do not realize is that they are actually wearing out themselves and there will not come an answer why? Because it's not relevant. And you're not focused on the things you actually should be busy with. Sometimes due to the lack of communication, we may lack the supply of the word or the ordinary way of receiving grace. But the grace of discipline is not restricted by distance. We can always prostrate ourselves before the Most High Yahuwah. The grace of discipline surpasses all the supplies of the other means of grace. The discipline of the Ruach HaKadosh is the greatest gift in life. It is not affected by our efforts. Wisdom great or small, or gift more or less. The Most High Yahuwah is not partial to anyone. The positive cannot substitute for the negative. The only way is to hand ourselves over unconditionally to the Most High Yahuwah Himself. Then discipline will come upon us. The stake is not a doctrine, but a practice. The Most High Yahuwah will allow us to practice it. Many things cannot be done through prayer, but only by discipline. I also uh, got the message from the Most High Yahuwah to uh, start an in-depth study about prayer because um, he said to me that we lack a deeper understanding and a basic foundation in what prayer actually is. And uh, the, the types of prayer that exists and uh, no one is teaching anything of these. So there are too many people lacking to teach others the basic foundations that they need to know in how to walk the narrow path. No one is, well, better said, two less people, two less people are teaching the basic foundations of what prayer is, what deliverance is, what spiritual warfare is, what 
the outward man is, what the spiritual man is, what authority and submission means, what a living sacrifice means, and so on. What it means to serve in spirit and truth. What true spiritual discernment is. What Yahuwah's work is. What Yahuwah's will is. Everybody is uh, reading scripture, and I, and I have done that too. And it was also needed for a certain process in me, but everybody is, is, is passing on scriptures, not even teaching, but passing on scriptures to one another without consciously knowing what they are actually do. Because these people lack a foundation in what it means to do to, to pass on Yahuwah's word and the responsibilities that it beheld. So that is why he asked me to start up what I'm doing right now by presenting these in depth study series. Bound when entering the fire, we shall have no smell of fire upon us upon our coming through the fiery trial. See for this the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 19 to 27. After being smitten many times, we naturally dare not be proud or careless anymore. Humility prompted by memory may not last for five minutes. And what I've already said earlier is that there are very much people in which I can, can see that they have a false type of meekness and humili humbleness in them and humiliation in them. Perhaps 20 or even 21 times will the memorized humility be gone and the natural pride fade away. Beatings alone can break down the outward man. No teaching, doctrine or memory can break it down. Beating is the only natural way for the breaking of the outward man. Hereafter, our will fears its own judgment as though fire, such work is dependable and lasting. After the inward part, better said, after the inward man is strengthened through grace and favor, and after the outward man, which stands in the way of the Most High's Yahuwah's work, is broken, then the inward and outward man become harmonious and united. In the beginning, the outward man may tremble in fear and dare not join itself with the inward man. But this will be overcome later on. <clears throat> Daily Yahuwah disciplines us. Every, everything which happens to us is unto this end. The Most High Yahuwah must break our outward man. The enlightened will prostrate earlier but even the foolish will slowly come around. There is no need to maintain it by memory. The Most High Yahuwah has no need of our memory. He will so break us that even when we forget, we shall still remain humble and dare not raise our head in pride. And this is funny because um, I start to see more and more 
how quickly I forget things. And um, I truly have the idea that memorizing things is something from the outward man. Because memorizing things is also a part of control. Being in control over something or someone or some situation. And then you can fall back on your memory. But that's the whole point. The Most, Yahu the Most High Yahuwah wants us to be completely uh, clean. So he wants us to start with a blank slate. So memorizing things, why should we memorize things if we are in full alignment with the Most High Yahuwah? If he finds it necessary that we have to know something that uh, we forgot, then he will bring it into our mind. That is the trust we need to have. Then we do not have to memorize things. Because he knows it. And when it, it uh, when he finds it necessary, he will bring up that that forgotten piece of text or whatever it is. And then you will say, oh yeah, that's true, yeah. We will sense pain should we become proud. The Most High Yahuwah wants us to depend on His favor, His grace, not on our ability to remember what I say, he wants to create a blank slate in us. He wants us to get rid of all that old. And memorizing things is part of the old structure. Keeping memories is part of the old structure. Memories are also there to keep you stuck into parts and pieces and moments of your life that you already have lived. Why should you constantly go back to pieces, parts, situations of a period of time that have long gone past and bring you back all over again into it? That is also the the, the, the teaching done in the New Age movement because they promote this going back to your memories as when you were three years old going back to the time when you were five years old what does that solve? so the Most High Yahuwah is is creating in us as soon as we get immersed he starts up this process of creating this blank slate in us and making us more dependent on him and him only how many times we resist being foolish and proud wanton and careless we know that the work of the Most High's Yahuwah's hand is to break the outward man. Do not try to build before the outward man is broken, for it is futile. So do not try to build before the outward man is broken, for it is futile. Eventually we shall see how the Most High Yahuwah does His work inside us. <clears throat> and I will see if I make this. Okay. 
And with this, I have come to the end of part four and the next part in this new in-depth study series of Surfing and Spirit is part five, the dividing of soul and spirit. So I wish you all a Baruch day. Thank you for listening and um, do not forget to praise Yahuwah and all the things you do. And Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yah.